Right. So, uh, Ross Johnson gave me this, and I use it all the time. Sharpen shovels on it, spades, I've done pickaxes, uh, currently doing an axe, right them are doing an axe now. Uh, just about anything you need to put an edge on. Old knives it's good for. I'm wearing this because I get quite um, choked up with the, uh, the dust in that. So, I'm going to carry on with this. Got a wee light so you can see. That's pretty good. Pretty uh, sharp, sharp enough for me. Thanks for that, uh, Ross. It's just a godsend, mate. Use it all the time for so much stuff. I slash it off, sharpened up, lots of stuff. Anyway, uh, we've got mushrooms out in the paddock right now, so I'm going to go and get a few of those and come back and split some wood because it's going to be winter soon. It comes around before you know it. The good thing about that is we can get out and hunt. It's cool enough, but right now it's humid and you can hear the cicadas buzzing in the background, making a lot of noise. Right, mushrooms, because we love mushrooms. What I do is I soak all the wheat for the ducks in water, and they can digest it better. You guys had enough, have you? We're going to change your place soon, because it's a bit messy here, aren't we? We're going to put you somewhere else, maybe down by the pond. Morning, Bigsy. How you going, mate? All right. Hey. <laughs> Good boy, good dog. What you doing, eh? Good boy. It's not that we don't have enough feed for the sheep, it's just that we don't have a sheep dog, and this is the easiest way to get him tame. Outside, Bigsy. Outside. Take a time. Take a time. No fighting. No fighting. Take a time. There you go. It's this one here I'm trying to get tame because I want to knock the wool off her. Just so I can get close enough to put a rope around her neck. No hey, mate, can you get out of my hand without bunting me? I'm Bixie trying to get in on the old sheep nuts. Yeah, she's always on the outside, she's very shy, but her wool needs to come off. Believe it or not, that wool's been on her for a year, very slow growing. So by this feeding, we can actually get them used to come up to me each day. Enjoy that Bixie, eh? Come on, let's go for a walk. That's actually a good enough basket to put mushrooms in. It's so humid. Look at this green paddock. Look how green it is. We've had so much rain. And this is perfect. It's actually too hot to even be wearing a bloody shirt. I'm starting to sweat. But that's really good for mushrooms. And the fact we've had livestock here in the past, there's lots of sheep poo in the paddock. So there will be mushrooms around here. I saw a couple last night. I also picked some puffballs, which I'm not a big fan of, but... The thing of puffballs, you can eat puffballs when they are white right through. So there's the thing. If you want to eat puffballs, you harvest them when they just grown. And uh, what are you doing there, Bigsy? What are you doing there? And you cut, slice them in half, and if they're white right through, you can eat them. This mushroom here, I don't think we can eat that. I think that might be a magic one, that one there. Yeah, it's got a bit of a gold top. But uh, somewhere around here, I'm expecting to find some mushies. We're finding the odd random one, but uh, none of the real big groups of them yet. Where's the mushrooms, Pace? Hey, where's the mushrooms? What you doing, Bigsy? Hey, what you doing, boy? Good boy, Bigsy. He's a good dog. What you doing, mate, eh? What you doing, eh? You a good boy? You like mushrooms? No, you don't like mushrooms, mate. Come on. Don't stand on it, Bigsy. Another random one by itself. Very white looking mushroom. Oh yeah, different colour, eh? The whole place, oh there you go. The whole place has got them spread out. Normally they're in a sort of tighter group. I've actually got a knife on my hip to cut the bigger ones, but these ones just pluck out easy. Oh yep, yeah. have you. It's a bit more like it. And this guy looks like he might be past his use by date, but we'll still chomp on him anyway. 
And these guys here are on their way out too, I think. They might have had too much rain. We'll take them anyway. They don't have much of a life, do they? They all sort of turned up. Apparently they turn up together, the water. So that must be part of their sort of way of reproducing themselves. Get really wet and then go back into the ground. Good dogs. Oh, here's a good wee bunch. They're growing kind of rings normally. Don't stand on it, Poe. Don't stand on it, Poe. Jeez, mate, you nearly stood on your mushroom. Don't stand on that. Here we go. Watch your feet. Watch your feet. You're just about squashing them. No, no, where you go, Poe? Where you go? Where you go? You're going to squash the mushrooms. There we go. Oh, that's a nice one. And have that. There's a whole lot here. They, they're growing in rings, although this isn't a ring, but it's the beginning of a ring. It might carry on later. We'll take these out. All of these look like they're pretty good tucker. So later on today I'm going to shoot a hare or a rabbit and uh, we're going to have with mushrooms. I'll keep everything in season. The meat goes really well. The wild meat with the mushrooms I find. It's a nice combination. That's a good, good feed there now. Good feed. Ross suggested that I dig this bit out too as a ditch so water runs right through because there is water there but we actually need vehicles to drive across that as you can see we're getting a hay. Uh, West Coast Feral suggested that I put some white bait in here. He said they'd eat all the uh, mosquitoes on the top of the water. You can see all the mosquitoes on the top of the water. I just thought it might be a bit too muddy still to release white bait. It hasn't quite uh, settled and it's going to be muddy because dogs are going to keep going on it. Not a big pond, I probably could have made it a bit bigger but it was just about the cost of the digger. But uh, later on down the track I might extend it when we can because it's uh, a real asset to have. A drink. Good girl. Tail wagon. She's just doing it because I gave her the command she didn't really want to. Good girl, Po. Good dog. I've taught all my dogs to uh, hydrate on command. Hey, you good girl. You're getting old, getting a few grey hairs. Oh, unless you got hairs, mine are just about all gone. Good girl. You're talking to me now, eh? You're talking, eh? Good dog. Yeah. The pack's quite different these days without Bruno. Quite different dynamics. We miss the old boy every day. Don't we, eh? Well, I do. You probably don't, because you're a dog. You're going to get your feet wet now, are you, Pace? Uh, one of you suggested that I make it so the sheep can't go in here and fall too steep. I think it's pretty unlikely they would. Sheep have hooves and they can climb banks a lot steeper than this even too. So yeah, thanks for concern, but I don't think any sheep will drown in this. Pretty unlikely, I'd say. If they can't get up there, they'll be sick anyway. See the fog coming down the gully from the sea. She's blowing onshore now. Tomorrow we're expecting offshore. It's going to change again. You can see Murray's dropped the gum tree up there and he's cutting up for firewood. He does a lot of work with firewood, Murray. It's handy. All this clover here. It's really, really good. Good for fattening animals. Thank you to all you guys that have offered me some help with my son and his predicament with the vehicle he's got that got written off by the woman who was driving whilst under the influence of crystal meth. It has been to court twice and I believe she's been charged but the cops still haven't got back to my son. It was four weeks ago since he texted the cop asking what's going on. Uh, Robbie, the goose shooter, has been really helpful to me. A couple of things he's been helpful. One, he's trying to source a starter motor for my old launch, which I'm trying to get back up and running, which I have got up and running but want to make it a bit more secure. The idea is to get that up and running, get the hole in the side fixed up properly lick of paint and get rid of it because I'm over wooden boats and Robbie's also been giving me advice on what to do regarding my son's predicament with his vehicle and he said that it's a small claims if the insurance company won't come to the party because my son only had third party insurance they're not actually liable to pay for his damage and the other woman has no insurance at all come on thank you Robbie He's actually hopefully going to come up this way sometime. I want to catch up with him. He's a good bastard. That was been really uh, helpful. So what we're going to do is get the file number of the case and I think we'll put it to small claims next if the uh, court don't... I mean, normally I would imagine the court would say that there's got to be a reparation because it's my son's car. It's a legal car. He had insurance. He's a victim. 
I would have thought that there'd be reparation and she would have to pay it back, but does the law always work out in our favour? Not always, sometimes it doesn't. Yesterday I uh, went into town and I spent 60 bucks and I bought a big tarpaulin, it's about 4 metres by 4 metres, and the wind was howling, the rain was howling, it's funny how I picked the wrong time to do these jobs, and I got up on the houseboat and I covered it up where the leak is in the chimney where we have not been able to find it. It's just so silly. So many times I've taken it off and replaced it. It's somewhere water's tracking. We just can't find out where it is. So in the meantime, while we're working on her, today we're actually having a break. Uh, I did a bit of work on her yesterday, but we're having a break. But you can see up there now, I've got a big tarpaulin right over the top, down both sides. And that there is just to keep the water out while she's uh, under repair. This is Stu and his son Sam in the background. And Stu is the reason that I grow wasabi. Stu's just come to visit me from the Catlins and so awesome to have him here. Hey Stu, this is the uh, wasabi you sent me the other day. That's what you sent me about uh, six months ago. It's looking good. Oh, the rhizomes are starting to form. Yeah, yeah. Pick a few off there and they're looking good, eh? The rhizomes are looking good. They're pushing up nicely. Yep, I just take these off, these, these bottom ones. Oh, yeah. I just pick them off like by pushing down like that. Take those out and you can eat that, eh? And gives them a chance to get a bit bigger. Here's one that's actually naturally died down there. So I'll take that out because it's already already gone off the plant. That, that's good management because it can rot around the base if it gets too wet. Oh, that's good to know. So yep. looks of so these are real important to get out. Dead, decaying and dying. Oh, really? Okay. Anything like that is real beneficial to take off when you can. But... Good, good tip. Yeah, well, I do come out. I'll do that more then. So I thought you left it in to go back in the soil, but I'll do that. Absolutely. Also, if there's any disease, it will just transfer it from one to another. So if you can keep it clean, it's... It's always a good thing. That's really good to know, buddy. But they're looking healthy as yeah, they're going to boom. As soon as the winter comes with the coldness and the yep. rain, they're going to go boom. Well, she's raining now. So come around here. I'll show you the ones, the cuttings I've done. Are these cuttings here? I've got a setup here, which um, it runs on solar power. Right now the sun's out, but these are 21 plants, all from just these the same the same plants, and they're grown in just that little pea metal. Oh wow! So they're going cool, eh? They're looking really good. Yep. So I've got 21 plants from cuttings, which You're is, well. and I've got some seedlings. I want to show you um, also the last ones you sent me over here. Yeah, sorry about those ones, they're like roughly packaged. Yeah, these ones, these ones were roughly packaged, but they actually survived, bro. Oop. You okay? Yep. Oop. Yep, so these are these have actually done really well. I, I didn't think they were going to su survive because they were pretty rough, eh? Oh, look at your enclosure. Yeah, look. Oh. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah. She Few likes of that you discard. Take those ones off, yeah? Yep, and just keep them clean around the base if you can. Okay. Because, um, yeah, if there's any disease, we'll just go from one to the other through the, the dead leaves. Okay, that's a good tip, bud. But they're looking good. That, is that a different one? No, they're all, your, they're all yours. All of them are the ones that you sent me. This is this is from that last lot you sent me. See how this one's going purple? That's a really good sign. That's it at its peak. Right. When they've got the purple base, this... Uh, mm. This variety goes quite purple when it's in the big rhizome. Okay, so that's that's good, eh? Yeah, yeah it does look, look healthy. These are your plants, so it's good. You've done well. You should be proud, man. I'm happy. Well, I'm, I'm stoked. You know how it is about us wasabi uh, brothers. We kind of um, get pretty obsessed with it. It becomes addictive. Yeah, it is addictive, yeah. Just be careful. It's a bit of a trap around here. Oh, I've got my city boots on. Yeah. I just want to show you the seedlings. The seeds I've got, Stu, they're um, in here. So uh, Craig gave me this glass house. It's a bit small, but here's the here's the first uh, seed here. Oh, yep, that's definitely wasabi. Yeah. And these are all coming through? Yeah, yeah. So look, look at this little plant. So that would be uh, six to eight weeks since you planted oh, it? I know, it is, yeah, yeah. It's frustrating, isn't it? It takes a long time. to grow and they start popping through. So do you ever grow wasabi from seed yourself in a container or not? Um, actually grows wild at home. It's become that adapted to our climate that it just drops down and grows in wild situations. So yeah, we're lucky, but... It can be so frustrating when you're trying to grow it though. Um, I've got some germinating at the moment. So wow. So the other thing I did is I've got some seed outside in, in that container over there. I've taken your advice and an opaque container. Yep. How, how long would have it been? Would it be Three weeks, but they were in the freezer for six weeks. Yep, they need that cold to stratify to trick them into the season changing. So that's why you put them in the freezer. But they're not growing and it's been three weeks, so it's going to be probably a bit longer, eh? Oh, for sure. You'll be another two or three weeks yet before you'll see any results. Good things take time. 
I like the chili plants. Yeah, little chili plant, eh? Yeah, and I've got some. Uh, do you know what that is? Uh, no. Is it a swamp plant? Yeah, swamp plant. Yeah, right, yeah, Sam. Yeah, it's swamp plant. plant. Yeah, I've got a few of those growing. That's a lot of food in here, man. You got good tomatoes. Yeah. Um, the best bit for harvesting the yams is after the first frost. Wait until all this foliage will die back down, and all this goodness will go into the bulbs and swell them up. Right. And it also makes them sweeter. There's a theory that when the first frost comes, because they're a beautiful, sweet thing. After the first frost. Are they called okra or something? The, the original. Yeah. Yeah. We're, it's only us Kiwis call them yams. Yams are actually a different vegetable, I think. Oh, okay. You can tell which is the yellow and which is the red just by the, the leaves. This is, this is um, I think this is uh, actually, well, no, maybe you can't. Because one side's yellow, one's red. Oh, this is actually yellow over here, I think. Maybe you can't, actually. You could before, but no, they all look like they're red now. But I've got yellow on this side and red on this side. There's some big varieties there. They grow real big. Oh, they do. Look how clean it is. This is all from uh, tissue culture. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a lovely looking wasabi. It's a different plant to yours, eh? Oh, for sure. Even in the growth pattern, it's different. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is the other variety. Yeah. So you got the two. So I kept it quite separate from yours. You can see the rain coming through here. But I nearly lost it. It was just about dead when I first grew it. And now it's, um, I've changed it around. I just, I didn't like saw. You've actually bought the same one, haven't you, before? Yes, I did. I didn't have the success, though. I wasn't as patient as you, and I lost all mine. So. Did you? You've done well. Yeah, I really, I built this box just for it too. So there's a lot went into it. But they're, they're a massive leaf, eh? They are, it's a lot bigger. It's a huge, and, and it's quite a light coloured leaf. Look at the size of it. So would you, see these brown leaves here, Stu? Would you remove those from the plant? Yep, definitely. Just have to be careful because the roots aren't very strong. Enough. You can see that one, yeah. yeah. Yep, I'll, I'll take that off. Okay, so I might just cover this up around the root here, eh? Just remove that leaf. Oh, I really enjoyed Stu's visit. He's a cool guy and he's got so much information and he's been so helpful to me. So thanks a lot, Stu. And good to see you again. And you too, Sam. Right, eggs. <laughs> he knows where the eggs are. Ladies, how you doing? Feet is working all right. Yeah? Watch old mate come out here with an egg. I'll let him have one each day as a treat. We pick one off the ground. He's got one there. And out he comes. And he knows to take it out of the house because if he eats it in here, the chickens try to get it from him, don't they? Okay, mate. Yeah, off you go. You go and eat it in the grass. Last time we tried that, the chickens like started pecking him straight away. So he takes it over there and munches on it. Good boy. Eat up. Eat up, Pace. No, 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 not another one. No, no, eat the one you got. It's been over two weeks since I've cleaned it, which is way too long. Oh, someone's clucky. Have you not eaten your egg there, Pace? It's in the bloody grass still. Are you going to eat it or not, mate? You don't know how to break it? <laughs> Bite the bloody thing. Come on. Here's the egg block. Eat up, Pace. There you go, mate. Oh, is that egg all right? Let's just check that. Oh, no, it's healthy. Try and eat it before it falls off the block. Let's get it back up there. Come on. There you go. Eat up. I've heard so many stories about not feeding your dog raw eggs, but we've never had Simon Elliott, have we? We've never had a sick dog get on upset guts, and Bruno must have eaten a thousand. He made it 12 years old. Yesterday I got on there with a shovel, and for about two hours I dug it out by hand, so it's a big pond now. I'll put the bank back up. It'll go for a while before the ducks destroy it, but they love having it. Ducky's the only one that stays on the outside with us. Don't you, Ducky, eh? And also Pace. There has to be some advantages to being a 20 year old duck, isn't there Ducky? Ducky's Miss Goby. Here you go mate, that's just for you. She's the last of my Miss Gobies. Incredibly old for a duck of uh, that age. Soaking the wheat really helps these guys a lot. There you go, tear it. They've got an automatic feeder too, but they prefer the soaked wheat. It takes about six hours for this to all swell up and it goes about a third the size bigger again. It definitely makes it a lot easier for the ducks to digest and they prefer to eat it too. Wheat's the cheapest feed that I can get. Got one clutch of eggs down here and I don't think they're ever going to hatch because the duck goes on them then she comes off and she's a 
away for like a whole day and then she comes back for two days and then she's off for half a day. They don't get a chance to stay warm. These guys are really bred for just one thing and that's eating. I've been unable yet to actually breed any from them, only in the incubator which I've got currently going right now. In your box. Good boy, you can stay there for a while. Hey Bigsy, you gonna come out in the rain mate? Hey Poe, you coming out again mate? They had a walk this morning, they don't really want to come out because it's wet. We'll open up and see if they come out. You're just going to sit there, are you? You don't want to jump in and get your feet wet, eh? <laughs> oh, Poe, clean your eyes out a bit, mate. Do you want to come out or do you want to stay there? Are oh, you going to come out now? Okay. All right. She's had a walk this morning. We'll give her another one. She's going to steal an apple off my tree. What about you, Bigsy Master? Are you coming out or are you starting your box? You look a bit tentative about coming out, mate. We'll leave your door open. You can decide. Pretty chill this morning. Oh, you're a good boy, aren't you, eh? He always jumps up on the old fridge to give me a bit of love. You're a good dog, aren't you, eh? Tail wagon. He's a real mixture of Poe and Pace, aren't you, mate, eh? Definitely uh, has got Poe's sort of way, but also Pace's way as well. The old Paw's definitely a Poe Pace trick. You're a good dog. We'll be hunting you soon, buddy. Yes, we will. Not too long now. As soon as the weather cools, she's still about 21 degrees today. Needs to be about 16 before I hunt my dogs. Good boy. You want to go for a walk or you just want to hang around? And... Hmm? Good boy. Can you jump down? You want to stay up there, do you? Hey? <laughs> what you doing, mate, eh? Oh, he's a good dog. You're a lovely boy. My apples are starting to slow. Oh, there's a wasp there. Jeez, that's a good way to get stung. Well, we'll just uh, move away very gently from him. I didn't actually see that there. Could have got stung. I've been getting stung a lot lately. They are actually sizing up slowly. They got black spot and a bit of codless moth. That's what you get when you get organic apples. It might be just bird shit. But uh, I don't care, they still taste fine and uh, these are organic apples. They've been pruned so we've fed a few to the sheep already and the dogs are munching on a few. Don't know if you can see down there, but the sheep have now made the houseboat their new home. I knew they would. Hiding under there, keeping them dry, except the merino. Three quarter merino quarter link and there she goes standing out in the bloody rain like usual this is actually a really good area for the sheep because it keeps them dry and also keeps them out of the sun I'm gonna go down and just see if my uh, tarpon I put up skipped the rain out last night well actually Creamy's unsociable as hell she thinks she's a human and she's uh, in her own little house there keeping out of the rain I built a few of those very very easy to build she's just chilling there she's not coming out and the rams are all hanging out under down there I do all of the filming on my channel with my phone. It's a Galaxy S21 Ultra. I've had it for seven months and the microphone is a bit stuffed up because of seawater getting in it too much. And also it doesn't have a full zoom anymore. Today the Galaxy S22 came out. It's expensive and I have budgeted for it but not quite ready to buy it yet. The only other thing I use is a GoPro uh, for hands-free stuff, for hunting and that. These guys are just very, very comfortable under here. Look at them just chilling. So I'm going to replace this phone, although it's not that old. It's also got a cracked screen. They don't last very long, but it's my main work tool. I use it for doing small edits, like shorts. And it's everything. It's my weather. It's, so it's important for me to have a good phone. It's what I run my whole business on. And uh, we'll see how we go with the 22 when we get it. I'll let you know. Let's just get up under here. We're up on the house boat now, looking down. The view up here is awesome. That ram's quite keen on that uh, you there. He's getting the old humpy thing going. I reckon I'd let them go, actually. You're going to do it, mate? He's been fighting the other ram for her breeding right. She's standing there anyway. Is he going to jump up? There's a... Uh, yeah, it could be some bloody sheep pornography going on on the farm. Here we go, he's got his stick out. She's standing. Here we go. Shit, it's bloody happening. Holy shit. Did he get in there? Don't know. The other ram's like... Now they're going to fight, aren't they? This guy's a weather. He's got no balls. So one guy's shitting and the other guy's like... Trying to bite him. 
That explains why they've been fighting, because it's all about uh, mating. He's like, nah, I'll get away from here. I think this guy's the alpha here. They're bloody funny, aren't they? You can see my tarpaulin on either sides. And for the first time, she's not leaking around here, which is bloody good. This is one of the jobs that I've got to do. Replace the flue, take all that out, you can see it's rusted, because it has been leaking along the roof here. You can see where it's gone yucky, that's water. But we finally stopped the leak temporarily, so I can repair it. This is another job I just couldn't do while it was on the water. One of the many jobs, there's also dry rot at both ends I need to take cut out, and wet rot. I need to replace this here, it's all loose and it's past its use by date and take this down and clean it the water builds up here as you can see it used to be a way of getting fresh water i used to get fresh water off that there but uh no longer eventually when we've got all our jobs done down the track she will go back in the water but that's a long long way off because it's time money and effort and uh time being the main thing getting the time to work on each day and also do all the other jobs. But it's here now and I'm feeling so stoked that it's here because it really is safe and secure. Nothing can go wrong, no one can break into it and we can just tick off the jobs. So stopping the water from going inside has been a biggie and getting some stairways up to it to work on it. And each day we're doing some work on the houseboat. I love it, I love it, I really love it. And I am so feel so content and happy to have it back in a secure place the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence I'll post stand in the ground as Bixie comes lunging at her I was down at Grossy Point in Mapua working on my boat, putting some oil on it, the old launch, and this young fella Thomas comes up to me and he gave me three of these. Thank you, Thomas. He said, I watch the channel and I just love it. I've got one for Poe, one for Bigsy, and one for Pace. How cool is that? I said, mate, please don't, but he did. And I thought it was so awesome. So I gave him uh, my CD, Bulls Ups, Ballads and Bullshit, which he, he loves. Bigsy, that's not for you, mate. We'll put you in your box and feed you, okay? Just trying to steal a couple of duck eggs that I, I pinched uh, for lunch today. I like the old duck egg. They're nice. People say they're just good for bacon, but they're good for everything. Bigsy, up! Good dog. Good dog. Poe's already in a kennel waiting. Aren't you, mate? you know what time it is? It's tucker time. Yeah. Dogs are waiting for the command for their tucker. Somewhere in there. Up. Bigsy's got the lion and chair. Nick gets his cut up because he eats too fast. Slow down, mate. Slow down. Slow down. We don't want you choking on it. Slow down. Go steady. This is the duck incubator that William gave me, and that's the temperature we run the eggs at. So, what I'm doing now is I'm just checking that there's enough uh, water in there. You can see the drips on there that would suggest there is enough we have eight eggs in there and we leave all the mud and stuff on them because it's apparently what needs to be stayed on there and I'm just going to put a little bit of extra water on here just run that in a wee bit because uh, it does need that to stop them drying out and this works really well we've had quite a few ducklings from here all our ducklings come from this this machine actually revolves them automatically but I also revolve them each time I open it just to try to make it a bit more natural, because a mother would do that. Try to keep everything as natural as we can. So, and just to pop the top back on again. When you pop the top on, you've got to make sure that this wheel here, it's got a little cam, that it slides into that gap, because that's what actually makes it so that they turn over 
each time revolves them. Plug it in. There she goes, and you can see the eggs rolling now as it moves. And that's how it turns them over. It's going to go back again. Now they're revolving again inside the machine. I've taken it off so it's cooled down a bit. Automatically it'll go back to 37.5 eventually. And then on the first day we show eggs starting to hatch, we turn it off uh, for half an hour each day, like two or three times during the day. Eggs are good tucker and we have them every day. Uh, that was my video on just around the farm. For those of you that were interested, thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next video. And be good. Can't be good. Be careful. See you later. A perfectly good brand new oven. But what do I do? I use the camp oven. Hopeless.